Good afternoon, class. In today's video, what I wanted to do was to go over the laws of exponents. So in this video, I'm basically following along with the very beginning uh, notes for quarter one. Um, so if you're if you want to follow along using that, you can. I color coded it just so that you had a it was a little bit um, easier to see. But um, so I tried to keep it as, as colorful as I could. So here we go. The laws of exponents. And I give an example with each one of them. So hopefully that helps you um, to see how the laws of exponents can be applied. I tried to keep it as um, in the simplest way that I could. Um, even though some of these examples look kind of long, I'm tr what I'm gonna try to do is appeal to you to um, how the breakdown of all of the different ways of um, applying these laws so that you can see through multiple means, even if it's one example, multiple means of how to get the same answer. So let's start with law number one. Law number one says x to the nth power times x to the nth power is equal to x to the m plus n. So basically, it's saying that if you have, if the bases are the same, like they're both the same base x, and they're raised to different powers, if you're multiplying them together, you add the bases. I mean, you sorry, you add the exponents. So that, and so we see that in this example. Let's say um, m was two and n was three. So I've got x squared times x cubed which I could write out, because x squared is just x times x, I could also write x cubed out as x times x times x. So notice that there are one, two, three, four, five x's, so, and they're all being multiplied together, so that would be the same thing as saying x to the fifth power. Now, of course, I could also get that by saying, oh, two plus three is five. So that's how I got that answer. Now let's move on to law number two. Law number two states that x to the m divided by x to the n, which is also written in this form as a, as a fraction, is equal to x to the m minus n. So you, if they're being divided, you subtract the, the first variable, first exponent from the second exponent. My example in this one is x to the third divided by x squared. So what I've got is I've got this fraction, and I put x times x times x in the top for x cubed and fraction bar, and then in the denominator, x times x for x squared. And as you can see, I've got x over x, and x over x. And as we, as we can recall, um, doing a simple drill, two divided by two is one, three divided by three is one, so therefore x divided by x must also be one. So if I've got, so that's why I've been able to cancel them out, and all that I'm left with at the end is just one, just x x to the first power. I could also rewrite that as <clears throat> x to the three minus two, which is equal to x to the first, or I could just write it as x. So that would be law number two. Let's go to law number three. In law number three, I say that x to the mth power, raise all of that to the nth power, is the same thing as saying x to the m times n power. So. In my example, I would say x to the x squared raised to the third power would be the same thing as saying x times x raised to the third, which is also x times x times x times x times x times x. And so if you if you if you look at this, that's six x's, so that would be x to the sixth power, which is also two times three. So that's one an easy way to, to remember that. Okay? Now let's go on to law number four. This one is a little bit tricky, so you know. Stay with me on this one, but here we go. If I've got the x to the if, if I've got x raised to the nth power, and I take the nth root of it, that would be the same thing as saying x to the m divided by nth power. So basically, if you take a root of it, whether it's the cube root, the square root, the fourth root, it doesn't matter. That root is going to be your de in the denominator of your fractional exponent, basically. So in this, now, I could just show you some examples and just say, and appeal to the law itself and say, oh, there it is. But what I thought I'd do is I would appeal to one of the rules that we are already familiar with, which is to take square roots of, of different um, values. So, I, so for my example, I took the square root of um, x to the fourth power. Now, this two over here, I wrote that just to show you that's what the root is. It's not necessary because if you don't write anything, it is assumed that you are talking about the second root or the square root of, of anything when you have the, the radical sign over here. So x to the fourth, based on our first law, can also be written as x squared times x squared. 
Now what I hope you notice is, based on your exponent, your training on square roots, like if I have um, the square root of nine, because nine can be written as three times three, and I've got two of those threes, what I can do is they, they basically are able to break out of the radical out of the radical and it would be simplified to just three okay so in this case i've got x squared times x squared oh i've got a square of x uh, a square of x squared so that means this x squared is actually able to break out and and it turns into just x squared at the end which is also the same as four divided by two which is two and there you go x squared um, one of the things I'll, I'll pause and do a little bit of a way that um, I'll introduce the way that I like to think about radicals. Um, hopefully this helps. If it doesn't, again, don't worry about this. Um, if it doesn't help, if it helps you, great. If, it, if this doesn't help you visualize uh, or at least picture mentally how, how to think about um, square roots or any, taking any kind of root itself, then you, know, then you can figure out your own method. But this is the way that I like to think about it. I like to think about square roots or any kind of roots or any radical um, signs that you put on onto a any kind of function I like to think of that as kind of like a jail and there is a there is a way to break out of that jail and the way to do that is if you can come if the if the occupants of this jail can combine their powers but only if they're the, of the same type so if you have like x to the fourth and y, the y will never break out because it, it doesn't have enough power to get out. The, the condition for, you know, the amount of power that's needed to break out is given by the root over here, which is this, in this case, a two. So x to the fourth, which is, what, what it's telling you is that you need um, a square, or you need, you need two sets of, of something of, of you know this base x to get out so the minimum requirement is x squared because x squared has two x's they can combine their powers and break out of the jail if it was the cube root then you would need three x's to combine their powers through multiplication and break out so in this case I've got x squared times x squared and it's a square root so I can break down x to the fourth as x squared times x squared you've now got um, a group of two, they can combine their powers through multiplication and break out of that, out of this um, square root jail that allows them to become just x squared, right? Because they've combined their powers. So hopefully that kind of helps bridge the gap between um, how to handle ra radicals or radical signs, roots, and it, how it connects to fractional exponents. Let's go on now to the very last bit of the laws of exponents, the fifth law. And that law is x to the negative nth power is equal to one over x to the n. And the way I thought I'd show this is I could just, this one I could just have just appealed to the law itself and said, it is a definition, here you go. But I thought what I'd do is I would use law number two over here to show you why this law actually exists. So my example this time, instead of it being x cubed divided by x squared, it's going to be x squared divided by x cubed. And so again, I'd show my multiple methods. Um, x squared is x times x in the divided by, so that's where the fraction bar comes from. x cubed is x times x times x. So what I can do, and like we did in this earlier part, I have, I have x divided by x, which is equal to 1. And so I've gotten rid of a few of these x over x is, and I'm, all I'm left with is 1 over x at the end of all of that. However, if I, use, if I appeal to law number 2 here, what that means is that this is the same thing as x to the 2 minus 3 because of law number 2. So that would be, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. But we also know that this result, 1 over x, is also true. So that's why x to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over x. So that concludes how to, how to, um, what the laws of exponents are and some of their examples that go along with them. Um, after this, of course, is the review questions that go, that go with this. So good luck in your studies, and may the force be with you.